Welcome back into another uh, preview of the upcoming basketball season. If you missed uh, the first two that we did yesterday, uh, did uh, Waverly Shell Rock Girls and Waverly Shell Rock Boys, you can find those on my Twitter. Go to Taylor from K Way. You should be able to find me over there on uh, on Twitter, and, and uh, they will be there. Also, the station uh, 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 Twitter did also retweet it. So if you'd rather go there and find it, you can do that as well. Again, uh, Waverly Shell Rock Boys and Girls from yesterday. Today we turn our sights uh, just a slightly to the south, and uh, we find Janesville. We'll start things with the Janesville girls, and we'll preview. Uh, their upcoming season. Of course, uh, they may get a little bit of a late jump on the basketball season. Uh, they are at uh, state volleyball. To nobody's surprise whatsoever, they've got the one seed uh, down there in Cedar Rapids at, at state volleyball. So they, uh, a number of those girls also play basketball. Uh, they very likely will get a later jump. In fact, uh, their first game or two possibly could be moved back. I'm not sure exactly how all that would be worked out. Uh, but we're going to take a look at what they've got uh, coming uh, this winter. And I th it's going to be, uh, I think, a pretty good season for the Janesville girls. They've had a decent little run uh, in, in basketball the last couple of years. And I think they've got a chance to do something similar this year. Uh, they're coming off a 21-3 and a season last year. They fell one step short of the state tournament. Steve Chittister, a fantastic head coach uh, for Janesville. He'll be back at it again. Uh, they lost to Springfield last year. 49-31 uh, was the final score in that one in sub-state. Springville, of course, would go on to win uh, the Class 1A title. So uh, nothing to hang their heads about, obviously. And they wanted to get to the state tournament for sure. Um, but they do fall just that one step short. Now, looking at players that they lose off of last year's team, there are you know a couple of seniors that they lose, but really only one uh, that played consistent minutes um, and, and was a consistent contributor, uh, and that's Kennedy Meister. Uh, obviously, she's going to be a player uh, that they will they will miss. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, she was a fantastic player, not only in basketball but in volleyball, in softball, in all sorts of sports. Uh, she was a big time contributor last year, um, and she's now moved on to the college ranks. Um, and uh, so they will be without her services uh, this coming up uh, basketball season, of course. But what that means is they bring back a number of key contributors, not the least of which Brianna Baker Bruce. Uh, she, first of all, has a fantastically fun name to say uh, just because it flows so well, Brianna Baker Bruce. But averaging nearly 12 points a game uh, last year. She's so smooth with the ball in her hands, a lefty that throws uh, some people off uh, from time to time as well. Um, you know, in addition to those 12 points that she averaged last year, 130 assists uh, she averaged on, uh, not average, she didn't average 130 assists. That would be some sort of record. Uh, 130 assists on the season uh, last year contributed. Uh, con Compared to 86 turnovers, that's still a number that I think she can lower. I think uh, she can uh, maybe even raise the assists just a little bit and lower uh, the turnovers uh, just a bit. But you also look at the steals, number 94 of them uh, last year. 21 blocks also led the team last year. She does a ton, and I think she can even pick up the scoring. I think she's got the, the ability to maybe be averaging – in the 15 point per game range, which is absolutely gigantic uh, in the girls game, uh, you know, and, and you keep those other numbers uh, that I talked about. I, I think she very easily could be over 100 steals uh, this year, uh, which would be huge. She is a dynamic player to say the least. Maybe, maybe the best point guard uh, in the area as far as the girls game goes. Uh, she is outstanding, and for Janesville to have her back, that's going to be absolutely gigantic. A number of other fantastic athletes return as well. Lily Lickway, uh, an absolute superb uh, athlete. Uh, she only averaged six points a game. I think that could jump up this year for Janesville, uh, but an excellent athlete uh, who uh, forced a lot of turnovers. Uh, she, too, uh, was a very good assister of the ball, if you will. Uh, more assists than turnovers. 
uh, which was key, of course, as well. Grace Hovenga had a very nice season last year. Uh, she really showed that she can score the rock. Now, she is not the biggest, but does tend to uh, find herself playing in the post against some bigger defenders. And so if she can continue to develop an offensive game against bigger uh, defenders, that would be ideal for her. She, too, is one uh, that can force a, a number of turnovers, and she did that quite well last year. Uh, many more steals than turnovers uh, for her. And then you look at a player like Kennedy Rican, another fantastic athlete, um, and she averaged 6.4 uh, points uh, per game last year and I, I think maybe that could step up a notch or two as well uh, and then another player other than those that, that we've mentioned that I want you to keep an ear on and keep it keep an eye on when you go to the Janesville games is Elisa Bangin she is an absolutely superb athlete all of these girls that we've mentioned thus far none of them are you know, a good shooter, but not not a good athlete necessarily. Those types, none of them are, are that. You've got a number of athletes down there at Janesville, and Elisa Bangin. I think she slides right on in uh, to Kennedy Meister's spot. Um, now Kennedy had that that baseline jumper. She had it down. That was her shot. She was money from that range. I don't know if Elisa has that. But Elisa may be a little bit better of an athlete, in my estimation. Uh, a really good leaper. She had a couple of games uh, that I did last year, Elisa, where she was the key. You know, she would come off the bench, and she was absolutely the key uh, for, for Janesville. And I think she slides into that starting lineup. Um, you know, and I think, I think you're looking at a pretty solid lineup. You add in a Bailey Hoff, who will be a junior this year for Janesville. You've got a pretty solid team, uh, and I'm sure there's going to be some some of the younger girls that maybe we don't know just yet who can slide into one of those spots and, and really send uh, this Janesville team, you know, off. Uh, get them really, really going. Now, one thing, one thing um, about uh, Janesville is the their schedule that they will play. There are some you would call them some cupcakes, and there's nothing they can do about that. It's it's just one of the questions that you ask about this uh, the schedule that Jamesville will run. Um, you know, will they face enough uh, strong teams to make sure that they're playing their best uh, ball at the at tournament time and able to knock off some teams that are the same talent level as them, or will they beat up on a number of teams throughout uh, the regular season and get to uh, a time when they're facing teams at the same level as them and, and maybe they struggle a little bit? Uh, you know, that's that's that would be my only question for them, really. Um, that and depth. Will they have enough depth? Uh, another thing to remember is uh, Janesville, they, they don't shoot three-pointers, which is so odd. Uh, to see in this day and age when when everybody's shooting and that's kind of the go-to thing is find me a bunch of shooters that's not really what Janesville does they averaged less than one three-pointer taken uh, this past season I don't necessarily see that um, expanding a whole lot Brianna Baker Bruce uh, made the most threes last year she made nine of them M maybe that goes up a bit Maybe she even doubles that number. Maybe she's close to, to 20 made threes. That would be huge, I think, for them. Kennedy Rican uh, can shoot the three-pointer a little bit uh, as well. But they just don't shoot three-pointers. It's just not what they do. They, uh, they play good defense. They force turnovers. They get layups. They score inside. They bring their offense inside that three-point uh, line. And they've had success doing that. I wouldn't expect Coach Chittister to change anything up uh, at this juncture. Um, they averaged 55, basically 55 points a game last year. I think they're likely to be somewhere in that range. Again, 22.7 rebounds a game. I think they, they're probably going to be somewhere similar uh, to that. Uh, an interesting note from last year, the third quarter seemed to be a little bit, I don't want to say a struggle, but they didn't score nearly as much in the third quarter as they did in the other quarters. Now, maybe part of that was, you know, they had some teams put away by halftime and they just didn't need to score at that juncture. Um, I think that probably was the case for most games. They had a big enough lead where, you know, they tried some things out probably in that third quarter uh, and didn't score as many points. Um, that is an interesting point, though. But uh, you also look at um, the point differential. They 
averaged beating teams when you add in all the wins and losses. They averaged beating teams by 22.7 points per game. That's pretty impressive. I think they're going to do something similar again this year. I just don't see much of a drop off at all from that team from last year. Um, you know, they don't lose much, and uh, and those juniors take a step up. They now become seniors. So we'll see what they can do. Of course, if you saw those videos uh, from yesterday, uh, you'll know that I've got a bit of a system and how I rank teams. A one, if I give you a one, that means I think you're a title contender. You should expect uh, to be challenging for a state title. A two is a state contender, a team that should expect to be at state or at the very least have a chance to go to state. My cat in the background, by the way, uh, that's Zoe, in case you were wondering. A three would mean that you're, you're looking to make a run. You're a team that maybe is looking to have just have more wins than losses. Once you get to the postseason, you're looking for things to all fall your way. You're looking to go on a run. And four would be your rebuilding team, a team that maybe lost a whole bunch from the year before, or maybe a team that just hasn't had a whole lot of success in your school's history, and you're looking to build uh, that team there. And so for Janesville girls, I would give them a two. I think they're a team that should expect uh, to be at the state tournament. They've got that type of talent available to them. Uh, they're well drilled, and I think they just should expect to be at the state tournament at the very least, be in a sub-state game with a chance to go to the state tournament. That's my feeling my feelings on the Janesville girls, I think they're going to have a very uh, successful year. Um, and, and maybe you disagree with me. If you do, let me know. If you agree with me, let me know about that uh, as well. I would love uh, to get a, um, you know, a conversation going. Um, so let me know what you think of this. Remember, um, the preview of the boys team coming up in just a little bit as well. So stay tuned to my Twitter, Taylor from K-Way. That's where you'll get all of the information. Thanks uh, for listening in to this one, watching this one. I certainly do appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Taylor Nitz. Okay, bye.